All right, guys, thanks to another awesome viewer of the channel, Justin lent in his Seiko SRPB57J1. Um, I have not noticed a ton of information on this guy. I'm not even sure if it's still available because when I looked it up on eBay, the prices were all over the place, like from $388 all the way up to like $588 and even some like $700 ones, which is just crazy. Um, I could see this being like a, you know, $300 to $400 watch maybe because it is unique and it's, you know, a flight style one, um, you know, has all the slide rule and everything like that. But uh, yeah, I don't know about the plus $500 range. Even some of those were pre-owned, but maybe I'm missing something. Maybe these are um, super sought after. But anyway, let's break it down. I just had to touch base on that. So uh, 44 millimeter watch. So it is a little bit larger, which is, you know, um, you know, and that's really, I measured it at the bezel, which actually sticks out a little bit more. So it's probably, the case itself is probably like uh, a heavy 42, maybe 43, but at the bezel, it's 44. 49.9 uh, mil lug to lug. So it is like a, basically a 50 mil lug to lug watch. 13.8 thick. You do have a slight dome to that, I believe, hard lux crystal. And 22 mil lug width. I've read a couple of places where they say 23, but I just measured it like for the third time in a row. Um, I measure 22. And then it tapers down to just over 18 mil at the, uh, right before you get to the clasp. Kind of standard affair for the Seiko clasp. Um, you know, all stamped out, which you guys know I'm actually kind of a fan of for micro adjust. Uh, ends up being really thin and has that awesome sound that we all like all Seiko fans display case back um, let me show you here you can see you got the hollow end links on the bracelet unfortunately but the bracelet is actually really nice besides that this houses the 4R35B variant movement it does have some anti-magnetic properties um, really nice watch overall you can look at the dial there you can see you have a Nicely applied indices with loom in those and uh, hour and minute hand, of course, a white seconds hand with a red tip. Very traditional styling for a flight style watch with a slide rule. So if you want to get into those formulas, there's all kinds of written information as long as video, as well as video information on how to figure all that out. You can do calculations and all kinds of trickery with that. I have no use for it, therefore I don't um, know how to do it. I didn't study it. I just know that that's a thing. So um, and I venture to say most people that are buying this watch are also not using the slide rule. But nevertheless, it's very cool looking. You have, uh, zoom back in here, you have a ton of information that is buried around that outside perimeter of the watch. And whether you use it or not, it's still pretty cool. It still visually has an impact. It looks the part, you know. So uh, made in Japan, of course, it has the... Uh, Prospects logo on there that's, you know, at one point was controversial, but um, it's pretty main uh, mainstream now. You have a date window at 3 o'clock, crown at 3 o'clock, of course. Pretty standard affair for most Seikos. Um, nothing out of the ordinary other than the bracelet. I have not noticed too many other watches using this bracelet. It is a split pin design, which I, again, I'm a fan of. It's very simple. The bracelet is very comfortable feeling. I can give you a wrist shot. It's a little loose on me, but you can see this thing has some crazy good wrist presence. That's on my 7.25 inch wrist, and it is insanely comfortable. So if you're looking for, I would say maybe if you like the Citizen Nighthawk, it feels actually more comfortable on wrist than the Citizen Nighthawk. Um, but of course it's automatic, so it kind of has a little more in-depth feeling or soul towards the watch. You know, as many of us uh, watch fanatics, we gravitate towards the automatics instead of the quartz. Um, so this one definitely has that going for it. And I could say I would probably pick this one over the Nighthawk. If you're looking, I know the Nighthawk is only a 42 mil, but this feels on wrist better than that 42 Nighthawk. Um, I, it's just, it's a different watch. I, I don't want to like focus on comparing it to that, but I just want to give you some sort of comparison. So if you like the um, Citizen Nighthawk, then I think you would like this on the wrist, probably maybe even more. 
but uh, 100 meter water resist it is just a push pull crown of course with that 4r35 you're going to get the hack and hand wind and all that stuff so again big thanks to justin for lending this in i just wanted to give you guys a quick look at it you can see the profile there of the case and everything it's just a, a clean really nice everyday you know flight style watch if that's what you're looking for I think this could be definitely an option for you guys. So let me give you a loom shot here. You can see the Seiko loom never disappoints. It's nice to see the, the numbers actually loomed out. And I just noticed they added a, a little pip over there just past the date window to not leave that space void of loom. And the hour and minute hand is certainly brighter than the numbers, but it is nice to see loomed out numbers. Um, here's my Zin 104. You can see that also has the loomed out numbers, which is, so, you know, uh, always a big fan. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Big thanks to Justin for lending this in. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow on the next vid.